Hey guys, this is Brian Carter, TGP Events Coordinator, and we wanted to take a second to unpack and explain the charges that are associated with working events as a part of our program. Working events is different from being a normal rep. This really is taking a meaningful step into embracing your role as a business owner. And to have access to these higher level sales opportunities and this highest level training, we do invest more in the program than we do you know, just buying gas to go do demos, for example. And so there are charges that are associated with all the shows and events that we do. The purpose of this video is just to unpack the various charges that we do incur and uh, how we make strategic choices on the right kind of shows for people at different levels within the program. This is one of many reasons why we need people to already be at the level you are currently at before you're able to work shows. When someone is making 30, 40, 45, even 50 percent, these numbers are much more tenable and I think you'll find that they make much more sense. Um, there is an element of risk anytime you do anything professionally and yes, it is possible to lose money on a show. But as long as you are following the training materials that we've laid out, you're taking time to work on your scripts and you're working in the field and the booth consistently, this can be one of the most lucrative programs in all of Cutco Cutlery. Now, on your commission statement, there's gonna be two different types of charges that you will see when you're working events. The first are what we call event charges. When we book an event, if for instance, we're working the Collin County Home and Garden Show, that event will cost a certain amount of money for us to book, maybe it costs $1,000. What's great is that Cutco Corporate, through the events department, uh, will actually book the events for us. Many of these events are booked months or even a year in advance. It's not at all uncommon for us to secure the best rates and negotiate good discounts and locations. But the reality is we don't want to have to float a thousand dollar show charge for 12 months. What's so great is that the company actually takes care of that for us. The coordinators and uh, approved managers will submit booking requests and then Olean through Dave Bush, the events department and the amazing team up there will actually book these events on our behalf. We do not have to write a check for them. We do not have to give them a credit card. We do not have to pay for the event in advance. In fact, the only charges that we see are after the event is completed. And so we've already made our money from that show and we're in the process of doing follow-up so we can continue making even more money on our service calls and working with the great customers we've added to our list. So the event charges themselves are your portion of the rent, so to speak, of that show. So if we have three people working all three days at a, we'll say a $900 show to make the math even simpler, that means that each person is gonna end up paying $300 for their portion of that show. Now, it's important to understand that some shows we work cost more, and some shows we work are extremely cheap and, and very affordable. Um, a gun show may only cost $60 for us to work, so split across two people, People, you're talking about $30. Sell a knife, drill some scripts, add a customer or two, that's a great weekend. The more expensive shows, that's one of the reasons that we do limit access to those to people that have hit the level on our roadmap uh, and are eligible to work key events or traditional events or state fairs or wherever we happen to be falling on the spectrum. You will never be asked to step into a show where the charges are more than you personally feel comfortable taking on. You'll know the price in advance and it's really up to you. But just like with a little more risk, so to speak, uh, the potential for reward is much higher. A show like a home and garden show, you know, if you're on your scripts, you have the chance to close many block sets um, and, and you can sell thousands of dollars at that event. In fact, the show that, that I'm mentioning, Collin County Home and Garden, you know, we consistently sell $15,000 or more working that show. $300 is a pretty small price to pay, relatively speaking, for the potential to go get $5,000 in sales. So that's what's really exciting. Now the gun show, you may not have the ceiling where you're likely to sell as much, but your profitability your number is, is high and your risk is incredibly low. So for that $30 you put in, if you can then go sell $1,500, well that's still a great return on investment and it was well worth your time to do it. On the event charges, those can be broken up over several weeks depending on the size of the show. 
And uh, again, Cutco pays in advance. This is simply us paying them back after the fact. Charges will usually happen the week after the show, but uh, depending on the level that you're at, sometimes we can actually have them uh, go through on the next bonus week that'll be coming up. If you are an FSM, those opportunities are available to you. One of the other great things we can do is set up a withholding account specific for events. So a very small part of your paycheck goes into this withholding, and that way when you're working shows, uh, the money comes from that first before you ever actually hit your commission statement. And if there's not enough to cover it, then they just charge our normal commission statement, just like if we'd signed up for a conference. Now, the second charge you'll see is what's called an overage recap. Now, the recap covers three different areas, okay? You'll see one charge on your commission statement, but it actually is three different things broken up. That's going to include the actual association fees, like uh, the money that goes into our team fund. We use to buy supplies and deluxe booths, um, signature experiences. Uh, it's what we use to buy the flags. We use it to buy order forms and literature and, uh, and all the things that we kind of take for granted when we're working shows. So that show fund is very important and that's one of the coordinators roles in the team is to administer the fund and make sure that we're investing in the right areas. The second would be expenses that are specific to that show. Like for instance, some of the junior league shows, we might donate a few pieces of Cutco to that show. That might be a part of us actually getting the opportunity to book it. So everyone who's working the show may have a couple dollars that goes towards getting those pieces that we're actually donating. That also can include groceries. If you do buy groceries for a show, like get potatoes or, or other supplies that are needed, you know, we can split that cost across the other people working that show. But you do have to get us a receipt immediately. Once we've done the chargebacks, which usually happen the Monday or Tuesday after the show is complete, it's really too late to do that because we can't fairly divvy it up among the people working that show. But again, you're talking about, you know, four to five dollars. You can also just pass a couple bucks between the two, the people working the event, and that's no problem. The third part of the overages is actually going to be the coordinator pay. The way that I'm paid, the way that all coordinators are actually compensated, is that everyone on the team when they're working events contributes 1% uh, of their sales and that does go to me as the coordinator. The DVM also contributes 1%. It's a little different for state fairs, but for our overall team, the coordinators do make 2% of the total sales. So what this means is yes, when you're working shows, you do make a lower percentage, but that means you make 49% instead of 50%. So the reality is if you worked a show where you sold $1,000, $10 of that ends up going to the coordinator and that's what compensates us for all the time we put into the training, organizing, structure, and uh, really just creating and setting the vision for the team. Now, I wanna go back for a minute to the association fees that I mentioned before. The money that we use to actually add to our event team fund and that we buy our supplies with. In the last three months, we've invested almost $12,000 into our displays and other items like that. So the money that goes there is definitely meant to be used and it's gonna make everyone's experience on the team better because it's gonna elevate our displays, our experiences, and just allow us all to have a more productive time here. The way the fees breakdown is very simple. If you're working traditional events or key events, the fees are going to be $10 a day for weekdays and $15 a day for weekends. Now for longer shows, that's capped at $60 total. Now state fairs, just due to the size, length, and scope, might have different charges and those will be discussed with people individually in prep meetings leading up to that type of event. If you are working marketplace events, if you're newer on the team and you're working gun shows, flea markets, um, farmers markets, Trader's Village, things like that, uh, again, part of the benefit of those is they have extremely low overhead. They're very cheap shows that you can learn and really add to your customers working. When you're working marketplace days, it's very simple. Um, the charges are just $5 a day. So if you work two days at uh, Trader's Village and you're working with someone else, let's say it costs $60, well then your fees for that show would be pretty simple. You would have half of the rent, so $30 would go there. Um, you would have $10 in the association fees, which would be $5 over two days. And uh, you would pay 1% of your sales for that event. So for perspective, let's say you worked a show like that and you sold $1,600. If you're a newer team member, let's say you're at 35%, for example. Off that $1,600, you're actually gonna earn $560 in income. Now from that $560, you would have $30 that would be taken away as far as the actual rent or cost of that show. 
you would uh, also see another $10. That would be the daily fees that all of us pay when we work shows that go to the, the fund itself to buy supplies. And uh, so that would be $10. And you would also have 1% of those sales that would go to the coordinator. So in this case, that would be $16. So in this example, you worked two days at Trader's Village, you sold $1,600, and you're not even an FSM. Now this may not sound like a super duper exciting weekend when you see people on the team that will sell five to $10,000 working a show, but you still profited $504 in this example. That's a pretty common example. So my point is this, don't be afraid uh, to invest in your business, but the most important thing you can invest when you're new is your time and working on your scripts and drilling things. But not Nothing replaces actually being in the booth. This is why we have so many great affordable shows that you'll have the opportunity to work when you're new. Now one last note, there is a third area that you can invest in uh, when it comes to the events program. And that's in your personal supplies and items. You'll notice that all the, the vets on the team, their displays are top notch. They have all the cutco you can imagine. They have uh, display boards that really uh, raise people's expectations for the price because it positions us as a high quality item, which we clearly are. You'll see people who have great cutco gear, hoodies and branded items like that. Um, people have stands for their hunting knives. People have all kinds of things. They have custom roll-ups and interesting things like that. And in fact, some people over time will eventually even purchase a booth. All of our manager roles and most of the leadership group does own their own booth. Now, I wanna be clear, all those types of purchases down the line, those are optional. Those aren't things that you have to do. And right now you should focus when you're new on your cash flow, on your skills, on your savings, on your withholdings. But eventually you will get to a point where as you advance in the ranks of the team, you will definitely want to invest in some of those things. Right now, just commit to your skills, commit to your training, commit to uh, having a great shift average and working a lot of quality events. And then uh, as the opportunities present themselves, uh, you'll be able to make great decisions on that. And if you're ever unsure whether something is a good investment as far as adding to your kit or your supplies, hey, definitely talk to the coordinators, talk to your district manager, or your DVM, talk to the leaders on the team, and we won't steer you wrong. If you have any other questions, always go directly to us. We're happy to unpack it for you further.